What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at THQ Nordic's new title, which obviously means it's not an indie game, but you know, it's really slow right now and I've been really interested in this one. So I figured we'd check it out. This is a game called The Last Train Home. It's a tactical RTS train survival game set in World War One. You are a collection of Czech soldiers that have unfortunately gotten caught on a diplomatic attache in the middle of Russia right as the Tsar is being killed and as the Red Army is fighting with the White Army for the fate of the country. It's fairly apocalyptic in its setting because you are foreigners with military, military weapons with foreign military uniforms on in a place that is very much kind of like radical right now and people are getting lit on fire and shot and getting put up against the wall in blindfolds. And so the entire point of this game is that it's basically got the exact same storyline as the warriors. Uh, you are unfortunately deep, deep inside hostile territory. You have a train. You're trying to make it all the way to Vladivostok where there is a boat waiting to take you back home. And along the way, you're going to be managing crew. You're going to be managing the train. You're going to be managing resources, leveling up guys, giving out promotions and getting into squad level RTS, I guess, company of heroes style combat with like a full cover system and everything else. For right now, what am I doing? Well, I'm in a village, and everybody in the village apparently here in Russia needed help, and so I just killed some wolves. I'm capturing a tower right now. I'm also commandeering a lot of their stuff because I need it, and oh look, the Red Army is here, and they're shooting villagers. Neopravil som ten plod len preto, aby zhorel. Dajte mi pár granátov alebo guľomet a ja červeným ukážem. Dude, that's a, that's a lot of them, though. There's like a lot of them over here. Oof, this could be problematic. This could be a big issue. Are they heading down the road that way? Oh, it looks like they are. Okay, so what we want to do then is we need to set up an ambush over here. And I have a machine gunner. Machine gunner, you're going to cover that point right there. That's all you, baby. Uh, these people over here, we're going to have to, like, figure it out. But I don't have time to fight everybody all at once. The trap is set. Ambush should be triggered. There's the machine gun fire going out. And as you can see, simple cover-based combat. Uh, if you are outside of cover in this game, you're going to have a really bad time. You basically die instantly outside of cover. If you have cover, you're pretty much good to go. You should be solid. I should probably... Machine Gunner's going to handle this guy, so let's have the squad pull back this way. We'll set up yet another ambush for the Reds over here. Did my Machine Gunner get him? Okay, cancel that Overwatch. Come with everybody else. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Everybody down here. Uh, you guys set up along the fence line. Hopefully he can make it too, because I'd like to have this machine gun on the fence line before they get here. It looks like they have aggroed onto something else. They are kind of storming their way through the village. And unfortunately, I think they've reset to a different position. Oh, it looks like somebody's trying to fight them right now. Oof. That may have actually screwed me over. Okay, get behind this fence over here. Like, I was hoping half of them were going to come down the road so that it wouldn't be a unified force coming along the flank along the riverbed here. Unfortunately, it looks like they all stayed together. All right, so everybody get in behind a fence. If I've got a machine gunner, he's going to be our person that determines whether or not this goes well. It looks like they resume their normal patrol. If it weren't for bad luck, man, I'd have no luck at all. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, so I'll just set up an ambush over here. Machine gunner, come to this point of honor right here, and you're going to cover the road, please. Get that machine gun set up a little bit faster. And machine gun set up. It appears as though they are kind of aware of us. But if you wanted to check this game out, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can play the game there. On top of that, you'll find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. It's very, very slow right now with indie games. And ever since I played the demo of this game a couple of months ago during a Steam Next Fest, I kind of felt like it was one of those games that I was going to end up playing anyways. It's got a really good premise. I've always been a sucker for sort of like the Odyssey-inspired or things that are inspired by the warriors. My man is unfortunately in cover right now, which means we're just wasting ammo. Let's bayonet charge him. 
bayonet charge was successful and flushed him. Uh, as you just saw, your characters have little abilities and things you can do as well to herd the enemy around and to force them to behave in ways that you want them to behave. I don't know where the enemy's at over here. Now we just gotta deal with this last squad. There's one right there. Get a couple of gunshots off that way. Definitely don't let them have the high ground right there, though. We gotta defend this place over here. So we really, really, really don't want to let them capture that. But if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can check that on out. I've also got a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live. Is that guy a sapper? What is that guy right there? Oh, he's like an officer? All right, just gun him down real fast. It's fine. We do have some injuries on the field, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, we haven't been able to, like, purely fight from cover intelligently yet. There you go. Everybody shoot that guy before he kills off the villager. Are we done here? Oh, there's more of them over here, huh? There are more of them over there. All right, well, let's flank around him because he doesn't see us yet. He's too busy shooting at the random old man. There we go. Nebo možná chtěli všem ukázat, co se stane, když si v téhle občanské válce nevyberou tu správnou stranu. Kapitán Langer bude vědět, co dál. Jdeme! All right, back to Captain Langer. Uh, we absolutely need to sweep around, though, and look for resources. Uh, resources are available on the maps as you're playing through them. Those resources are vital. Like, 100% you need to have those resources or you're going to have, like, a really bad time. Uh, when you go into the overworld management part of the game, especially with regards to fuel. It feels like I am constantly in this game just eternally out of coal. Uh, this game does have a considerably long burn-up time, but it's entertaining. This game actually did a really good job. The first two hours of the game are mostly just kind of like a handheld tutorial where the game is teaching you how to play with all of its various mechanics because there are a lot of things to keep track of. However, uh, they do it with full motion videos that have actual actors. Like, it's a great looking game. It's very, very entertaining. Like, I was actually gripped by the storyline all the way into kind of where we are right now for recording the video. And so honestly, right now, my impressions of the game are quite positive. I think they've done a good job with this one. Uh, let's head on down the hill. We'll see if there's a few more things laying around over here or if it's going to be safe for us to evac with all of the goodies we've picked up by helping the villagers. I have good news. There was some drips and drabs of food around that we could grab before we leave, and we do have to feed our soldiers every single day. Otherwise, there's big-time morale failures, and so I'm glad that I actually swept the map and went and looked for it. Every single time you do a deployment, you get to give medals to people. Medals give them a bunch of free XP, basically for distinguishing themselves in combat. So we can take Rosty Slav, for example, over here and take him up to level 2 if we wanted to. And since he's probably one of the weaker guys on our train, that's a really good idea to do so. Once you confirm the medals, it's going to show you everybody that got promoted. It's going to show you all the XP and stuff they got. Uh, you also, every single mission has a number of challenges that you can undertake while you're running around. A lot of the missions in this game are actually kind of flexible. Like, as long as you don't mess up the main objective, like the sub-objectives that come up haven't really mattered altogether that much except for XP along the way. Like, I haven't really had a mission get harder or fail because, like, a sub-objective didn't get taken care of. Like, you might miss out on some loot or something. But it's actually been kind of nice. Uh, I haven't felt overly punished. It will tell you everything you picked up. So I picked up all kinds of loot here, bullets. Uh, the game tracks every single round that you fire. Yeah, it's that kind of game. Um, so just keep that in mind, too, that if you're in long engagements where you're in cover and the enemy's in cover, they have supplies and you don't. They're in their own country. You're operating out of a train as a forward command center, so running out of bullets is bad. Uh, you will get flavor text after missions. It's all very exquisitely well-written, well-spoken. Uh, the storyline is quite good. I've enjoyed everything so far on this front. Another day, another victory. You may have doubts and worries, but for a moment there is triumph. You savor the feeling before going back to the stark reality of your impossible journey. All right, so here's our train gameplay. That's right, I heard you like trains. Uh, this is our train. You get to build cars on it. You can also like upgrade the cars and make them nicer. If you wanted to do so, individual car parts can get damaged. Uh, they can get messed with and become non-functional. 
if you wanted to like reinforce these you can do that with metals and things honestly what i think we should probably do for right now is take a look at an infantry car and see what we can do with that uh, it looks like we can mostly do metal plating and it looks like we can add some things but we can also add some heating which i think would be really really nice we haven't had to use it yet but increasing the inner temperature level of this car would probably be a really good idea. It'll make the people that live inside it quite a bit happier, and it's not like we're hurting for cloth right now. So let's go ahead and insulate this. Now, when it comes to insulating things, you need to have workers. Unfortunately, I think all of our workers are doing something else right now, but this is an example of the upgrades uh, that you can get for people. You can make them more comfortable when they're resting inside the living space. The temperature outside is going to change nominally, and so they're going to need different levels of insulation inside these cars uh, in order to not freeze to death in the middle of the winter. We also need to manage stats for every single person inside of here. So that squad that I sent out to that previous mission, look, they're missing stamina right now. They're missing health right now. They need to be back on the train for a little while, and they need to recuperate before you can send them back on out, which gives the game kind of this delightful little XCOM Long War feeling to it, where it feels like you're managing a lot of different persons personnel but all of them also have like personalities that grow on you and I assume that must be kind of what it's like for someone who's like a captain who's in charge of like a lot of people but not like an enormous number of people you kind of get to know like the main players that are under your command and they like stand out but also there's just so many people that you can't get to them all and pay attention to everything that everyone needs kind of an interesting little conflict that they have right there every single soldier has stats by the way you can see them over here on the right uh, I would click on their unit card if you can. Their unit card will open up, and you can decide what stats you want them to have. Now, this guy is a scout, so if we take a look at his scout card, as he levels up scout, he's going to get free stats, and then we can take a look at all of the different passive and active abilities that he can deploy inside RTS combat, and we can customize those uh, by giving him more stat boost to the things that matter. So, for example, uh, it looks like he gets a lot of benefits from dexterity as of right now. He also gets camouflage, it looks like he gets that right there. We've got Death Zone. Uh, most of his stats are not actually invo- Most of his abilities are not invoking stats, which is really nice. So we'll add a little bit of dexterity, but not only that, you can give them secondary jobs. So for example, if I need more workers. Boom, baby. He's now a worker, and you can see that it's added a train worker card over here. There's a lot of micromanagement that goes into this. That's one thing that I will point out, is that there's a lot of micromanagement to, like, a lot of your guys all leveling up, like what's happening right now. Uh, you're going to be micromanaging for a while if you don't stay on top of it. I don't know if that's inherently, like, a flaw of the game, but it is fiddly-diddly and micromanagey in the early game when people are constantly leveling up. I, I feel like I'm constantly fiddling with unit cards and stuff. It's not necessarily a problem. It's just a warning that, like, hey, this game is not going to be nonstop action. You are also expected to do what a commandant or what a commander would be doing, which is, like, managing personnel and doing paperwork. One thing that I also appreciate in this entire process is that if you take a look at the unit cards between male and female characters, they went out of their way to make a specialized unit card for every single job based on whether or not your character is male or female. It's a little detail, but it shows that someone gave a shit. Uh, and those are the things that I kind of look for when it comes to like, you know, how did this developer do with the game? That's one of those little details that did not need to be put in the game at all, and yet they went out of their way to do it, so you love to see it. Oh yeah, did I mention every single one of your characters also has an opinion on the current conflict in Russia, by the way. Some of your characters are communists, some of them are capitalists, some of them are monarchists. I'm sure that will lead to no trouble at all later on down the line. What could possibly go wrong? But, having done all my level ups now, we now have the guys required in order to work on the train and start insulating it and making it a little bit more comfortable. So let's go ahead and hit it. Uh, we will also... Do I have to depart right now or do they have to stop the train to do work? Uh, they have to stop the train to do work. That's fine. We have a lot of, like, wounded people. So, like, I'm okay with it. Did the appearance of the car change? No, but it does get a little icon that says it has one upgrade. I do want to make this area, like, much more comfortable for all of my guys, too. Three new living spaces for new soldiers. Increase health and morale recovery. We need, like, what, 50 wood and some cloth for that? Yeah, go ahead and put them on it, man. Why not? 
So the upgrade's done. Unfortunately, one of my guys got injured while working on it in a randomized event. But this is the rest of the game. Uh, you've got an entire Russian world map over here. And you are going to be cruising around. You can deploy your squads to go to passive locations. Uh, these passive locations have loot and thing you, things you can grab on them. So obviously there's wood in the lumber pile. There's abandoned villages that have come up in the Civil War uh, that will have things that you can scavenge from out there. So were I to stop the train right here, I could go in, I could select a squad, and I could tell them to go grab all that stuff inside of there. Uh, it's going to list all the perks that all of your soldiers have by the way, up at the top, uh, different perks help out with different types of looting. So if I send these guys out to go loot an empty village, they have the burglar trait, which means that they find things better inside dilapidated locations. These guys have a hunter and they have a survivalist and they used to have an herbalist in there until I did all my level ups. I've got to rearrange this squad right here uh, before they're going to be useful. But, uh, they have perks that make you get bigger yields from areas abroad if you're trying to grab stuff. I think we've got enough food for like three or four days. May not be the worst idea. I think we should hang tight till morning. Just let people heal, let people rest, because I do want to grab these goodies over here. I actually feel fairly passionate about it. So we'll wait till like 3 a.m. and we'll kind of see where everybody's at. The game does use a functioning push pause in order to allow you to manage everything that you want to manage. I think that also goes for the RTS combat. We'll check when we get to that 122 kilometer engagement that we have over there. And once we get over to that, I'm pretty sure you press space in this game and it gives you a tactical grid mode that you can use to plan things out. But let's select a squad. Uh, we don't necessarily need to send this many guys on this mission. Who was my burglar? My burglar was the medic. Okay, pull two guys off of there. And we'll deploy those guys down to the village to go grab what they can. Uh, we also have the lumber mill up here. Technically, I could send a squad up that way to go grab it. Do we have anybody that has decent HP right now? Or anybody that has like a... Is time still running right now, by the way? I've noticed with some menus while I'm, like, going through things, it will, like, unpause. Or it won't pause when you go into a menu and time will be running in the background, which leads to inefficiencies and, like, resource losses. And so, anyways, I don't appear to have anybody that's crazy good at chopping trees. Uh, so we'll just send those three out to go grab it. And as you can see, my squads are going to disperse into the horizon when they arrive at locations. We click on it. It will initiate kind of like a scavenging thing. You can keep an eye on their squad level energy to make sure they're not too burned out and tired. Sergeant Major, we went through the place. It was as empty as it looked from afar, but the owners left behind some things. Cool. Uh, we got 43 metal and 8 fuel. I'll take it. You can never have enough fuel. Uh, you guys down here, go ahead and redeploy back to the train, please. Those guys right there on the wood pile. Go ahead and see if we can grab some trees. 84 right there, plus they get XP, dude. Nice. Uh, we'll let everybody rest for a minute while we wait for these guys to come back. Maybe we'll get the train going, like, a little bit just to make their life a tiny bit easier. There we go. And so now that we're good to go on that front, let's kick the train on up and let's get going. Apparently, we have level ups. That's nice. I guess they're getting XP for just doing their thing over here. Let's go ahead and slow the train down. We definitely want to send our hunters out to go hit that location right there. So let's go ahead and hit it. These guys right here. We're going to go ahead and deploy all of you to go see what we can get out of the village. All right. And so we got an hour of exploration in the village. Good to know. One thing I absolutely adore about this game is when you zoom all the way in, your train is actually near the things that are happening. So you see how we're near a bridge right now? When we zoom in, it gives us a bridge map or like a chasm map. If we stop inside of a city, like our train is actually in a city pulling up to the station. Just a bunch of lovely little details here, which I think are going to make this quite a successful real-time strategy game. It's not incredibly in-depth when it comes to the RTS mechanics in combat, but there's enough customizability here in making characters that have like sub jobs, main jobs, and like train jobs and things that I, I really feel strongly that this game has such a unique premise 
that I think it'll sell. We got 150 cloth out of the village. That's not great, but it's fine. I'm not, like, immensely stoked about it. We should also upgrade another train car because we're going to be sitting here anyways for the next X amount of time. It's daytime right now. Who wants to work? Who's ready? I actually don't care if it takes two hours. We'll just put one person on insulating the car. Like, it honestly doesn't matter. Uh, just because we're waiting on this squad to come back anyways. They've got at least another hour of fishing. And then probably an hour walk back. So, like, who cares? Why waste everybody's stamina getting it done fast if we're not going anywhere anyways? Uh, we've got the lake right there. Good stuff. Come on, big yields. The lake was full of fish, and fortunately Maximilian Drap was with us. It was like magic. Maximilian was able to pull one fish after another. Our trip was a great success. Fifteen fish right there. Not bad. I'll take it. Fifteen fish is better than no fish. That's a half a day's worth of food that we just pulled out for like maybe an hour, two hours worth of time investment. I'll take it. The upgrade should be done over there as well. Me thinkies. Uh, everybody's kind of tired, so let's get the train back on the road. We don't have a conflict for a while. And so, actually, no, we've got a Red Army camp down here. Ugh, I guess it kind of depends, man. I don't know what we want to do with the Red Army camp. Or what it's even a good idea to do with the Red Army camp. How's Squad 1 doing right now? Are they tired? We have one guy who's tired. Is he our hunter or otherwise person that we care about? He is not. Let's just kick him out of the group. That guy's sickly, so we don't want to take... I guess we could send the herbalist, though. Let's send the herbalist. We'll send the herbalist in real fast, and then we'll we'll deploy them, because that means we've got an herbalist. That means we've got a hunter. That means we've got ourselves a scavenger, a forager. So, like, I think they're going to get a good yield out of this place. Let's find out. Uh, looks like they found baskets full of berries. Camille Hadraba was very helpful. And apparently Antonin Kura was also helpful. We got 25 herbs and 28 food. There you go. So we've gotten more food than we ate today just foraging on the road. Good. And we still got 12 hours left in the day to do activity. Okay, well, we still got six hours left in the day. Or I can do math. We've still got seven hours left in the day to do activities. All right. Let's go do activities. Uh, that right there in Shatsk, which is obviously a town that was given a beautiful name because it's a beautiful place. Uh, this is an herbalism vendor over here. You can tell from the icon. My question is, do we investigate the Red Army camp that we got told? Apparently, this Red Army camp has been preying on neighboring villages and, like, taking all their supplies and stuff. However, our command explicitly told us not to get involved with the Russian Civil War because of diplomatic problems. Well, I gots to do what I gots to do. She's sleeping right now. Squad 2 has full energy. Who can I strap on into squad two? Let's go ahead and edit out squad one real fast. And then squad two, I've got a medic. I've got a rifleman. Who else do we want to bring over here? I definitely need, like, more riflemen. So there's another rifleman. I could use a grenadier. I think that would be very, very important. Adam is a grenadier. Yes, I would like him as a grenadier, please. So we have ourselves a scout. A sniper, basically. We have a rifleman. We have a medic, a rifleman, a grenadier. We don't have a machine gunner here yet. Let's take our low-level machine gunner with us because this guy's almost level three. and so, I'm sorry, he's almost level four, which means he starts adding his fitness stat to his aim chances when he's firing at enemies. I need to get another machine gunner filled in who's, like, as good. I don't know if I should bring... It recommends eight people come on this mission. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Bring Camille. Another grenade guy would be good. We'll bring an extra guy just because I got a bad... This is like an enemy training camp, so like I got a bad feeling about this one. The soldiers make their way deep into the woods, making every attempt to move undetected. It's not long before the sound of shooting and gunfire arrives with you, and the breeze carries the smell coming from a field kitchen. This leaves little room for doubt. You found a red training camp. 
They quickly assess the situation from a nearby hill. There are a few key positions defending the training camp, and you observe plentiful ammunition, trucks delivering supplies. Destroying these targets, killing the commanding officer, would hinder training of new recruits for some time, but smoke is on the horizon, meaning that this isn't the only camp in the area. It seems the Reds have reinforcements close by. This may be your last chance to turn back. Eh, we're at the end of the video anyways. Let's send it, dude. Oh, this character hates communists. He has a history with the Reds that needs to be paid in blood. Oh, damn. All right, buddy. Look at you over here, ready for war, ready to throw down. Co ne, zničte. Hledejte hlavně dokumenty. V naší těžké situaci mohou mít přesné informace větší cenu než zlato. Ale opatrně. Tyhle kopce jsou pro kulometná hnízda dokonalé. Takové pozice bychom měli raději obsadit. A nezdržujte se. Těžko říct, jak dlouho budou rudí pryč. All right, this game does have a stealth system. There's a reason why we have scouts. Anybody can go stealthy, but scouts tend to be better at it. Enemies do have vision cones. Uh, there is a rudimentary stealth system in this game with, like, distractions. Enemies have detection times if they see you standing around. Uh, let's go ahead and scout that over there. So we've got a whole bunch of soldiers walking around over there. We have to come in along the fence line if we want to get him. But I think it's doable. So what we want to do here is we want to have one guy with binos over here just keeping overwatch. We're going to have this guy sweep in. That'll allow us to watch enemy unit patrols, no problem. We can figure out where they're going, what it is they're trying to do, and more importantly, how we can whack them without getting caught. I believe that I see our opening as long as this guy doesn't turn. If he turns, we don't have an opening. Yeah, you're going to want to get him from like the... There we go. Got his ass. All right, so this guy over here is up next. We're going to have to take him. It's important to note you do only have line of sight in this game unless you have someone with binoculars scouting the location. So normally I wouldn't be able to see all this. Enemies don't seem to notice things like blood or death uh, from what I've seen so far. I can't promise that, though. It's just that like I haven't seen an enemy be like, oh, there's blood yet. Haven't seen it. Uh, but I'm very excited about this strategy game. This seems to be very well put together to me. This seems to be a game with an eye for detail and a lot of different kind of, I guess, moving mechanics in it that I think are going to lead to a lot of fun. It's been a long time since I looked forward to an RTS like this one, and I'm really, really glad that the first four hours that I've spent with the game have been very, very positive. Um, I don't really have that many complaints about my four hours with the game. Keep in mind that this is just an impressions video. This is not a full-on review, so something may happen later on in the game that spoils that impression. But for now, this game seems to be a competent RTS that's not really doing anything too wild and crazy with its real-time gameplay. However, the train management portion of the game does the heavy lifting right there, kind of hybridizing everything. And so far, I've been really happy with the level of customization and activities I can do with my troops, things I can go out and do in the hinterland. I've enjoyed the scavenging. It's almost a zombie game if you think about it. And honestly, developers, you want to make a lot of money? Make this game moddable. Allow some modder to make a zombie apocalypse mod for this game that plays endlessly like the long war with you on a train with World War I soldiers fighting zombies at different locations, dude. Let some modder make that mod and watch how many copies you sell. Because if you really think about it, this is just a zombie game, but they've swapped out the zombies for World War II communist Red Army soldiers. That's it. You're surviving. You're in a train that's trying to make its way from point A to point B while gathering supplies, fighting enemies, trying to keep your people healthy, unbit, unsick, so on and so forth. It's a zombie game, dude. It's an RTS zombie game, if you really think about it. And I like it a lot. Uh, this game has a lot of things that have grabbed me, and I have not been disappointed yet by anything that I've seen so far. Uh, anything that was like, yeah, kind of weird. Tak se podíváme, co tam je. Vidím nepřítele. Ano, ano, pane. 
anything that was kind of weird was probably my fault from what I've seen so far. I replayed the first couple missions multiple times trying different things out whenever somebody something was like mildly annoying just to kind of like figure out if I had screwed up or not. So it looks like our opening over here is going to be a tough one. I need him to sneak in over here, but that's going to be the end of our video. My name is Splattercat. This is The Last Train Home. I think the game is rad. I can't wait to play it myself in my free time. Uh, I will see you all later. These are my first impressions thereof. As far as options goes, we can run through those real fast. It looks like we've got immersive audio language, but it looks like you can probably swap that out. I don't know exactly what that means if they've got audio language for English or whatever else, but I've been listening to it all in Czech because, you know, they're Czech soldiers. I want to hear Czech. Uh, you can customize your movement speeds for cameras and things of that nature. We can lock our mouse to the window, which is really nice. That's one of those little quality of life things that doesn't annoy you till you don't have it. Um, it looks like we can hide dead bodies. So there you go. It just saves, uh, just saves performance if you want that right there. I'll confirm it because I like the bodies. Makes the battlefields feel more lively. It uh, looks like you can actually fully customize at any time the difficulty that you want to play at. And it looks like you can actually almost like completely disable some of the mechanics and make them much less severe. And so there is some accessibility here too that you can play around with. It also lets you highly customize your auto pause. And so maybe that's something I should have looked at for that complaint I had earlier about time running in the background while I was in menus. I had no idea that existed. Uh, graphically, it's got FSR, it's got DLSS, it's got all of the borderless, bordered, and full screen options you would expect. V-Sync is on in there too if you get a lot of tearing with your monitor. It looks like we've got brightness, gamma, sharpen, motion blur. We can just get rid of that entirely right this second. Uh, but it does appear to have a really good suite of graphical options as well that you can play around with. Good stuff. Uh, we've got audio selection controls over here. You can turn off unit barks, which I think is probably the nicest quality of life there. And then it's got fully rekey bindable controls. Well done, developers. You've done a good job. I'm excited about this one. Take care, chat. I'll see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. No complaints about this one. Looks great. Plays great. I like it.